Good morning, welcome to Planet Mojo. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to identify buffalo grass seedlings and how to give them their first weeding. I've already did a little bit of weeding here and there, but there is plenty of weeding to do. This right here is buffalo grass seedlings. And it's fairly easy to tell because each individual plant will usually have, like there's one that just came up and it already has four leaves. They generally have a good amount of leaves like this and the leaves are really narrow. They're about a 32nd of an inch wide. This, I believe this is foxtail, but you could see how much bigger and coarser it is. And that's true even with the tiniest ones, tiny ones like that. Those are all foxtail. And the hard part about this is getting it weeded where you have a couple big foxtail, but you have buffalo grass growing all around it. In cases like this, there's no buffalo grass around this, but you could see all the damage that that did. That's about an inch and a half around. So if you have foxtail like this, that's only a quarter inch away from buffalo grass. If you hand yank that, it's gonna pull the buffalo grass out with it. So there's a couple ways to take care of this. On the edges of the planting, I can reach in pretty far. And what I'll do is just take a scissors and cut these foxtail off. You can see buffalo grass right there. And then the rest of this is all foxtail. Let's get this cut and then I'll show you a couple other instances. Now, I believe that these foxtail will grow back, but the next round of weeding will be with quinclorac, a spray, and anything that grows back will just be killed with that. The only reason I'm hand doing this at all is because these can't get sprayed yet. You have to wait a month before you can spray them, and these are only two weeks old. Yeah, the first time I did this, I just pulled the foxtail out and I lost so many plants that I started doing it this way. Yeah, it seems like almost every one of these foxtail has buffalo grass right next to it. Like I said, if they're all by themselves, like this one, you can pull it, but you can see how far the damage went nearly to the buffalo grass back there. So, as long as you got a scissors in your hand, you're better off cutting these. And I can leave them in here as well. I've been tossing them on the road just because I'm right next to the road. but they're just going to shrivel up and brown up and not be a problem if they're in here. Some of these broadleaf weeds, like this one right here, just have a long tap root and you can yank those out even if they're right next to stuff. Yeah, this is a real pain in the ass, but it really needs to be done. You can actually wait the entire month before you do the weeding 
and just spray these, but the foxtail is now at the stage where it's going to take off. And this foxtail will be two feet tall by the end of the month. And this stuff is only going to be another couple inches or so taller. So it'll kill a lot of your buffalo grass by that time. And you don't want that. Yeah, these foxtail could actually be a good deal bigger than two feet by the end of the month. Once foxtail gets to this size, it starts growing incredibly fast. Yeah, I just pulled out a little buffalo grass. Pop that back in, but that's what I'm trying to avoid. And if it gets too difficult, you can just cut the tops off of the buffalo grass and your foxtail, and they're both going to grow back but you're going to be killing the foxtail in a couple of weeks anyway, so only one of them is going to make it through it. All right, you can see what I'm up against here, especially stuff like that. That's in further than I can reach, and we're going to be doing that stuff a little bit different. There's a big patch of it going through there, and going right through there there's other areas where there's not that much at all yeah look at that giant patch over there and then another giant patch all along that edge over there the majority of that stuff is going to be treated different but let's get these sides done and then i'll show you how i deal with that sometimes if you're just walking by and weeding and you yank a weed like that and just throw it on the ground It'll send a root into the ground and the damn thing will still be alive. So it's best to throw the weeds out if you're yanking them, if you got the full root. Doesn't really matter if you're trimming them because that top part is going to die anyways and the root is going to remain alive anyways. But if you're just hand yanking them, try to get them out of the planting area if you can. Again, once I come along and spray this, all of these weeds are going to die anyways. There's one right next to a plant. Yep, that's going to yank the plant right out. So we'll cut that off. Yeah, this is a tedious job. I chose an overcast date to do it, but the sun is starting to come out. I'm in the shade of the tree right now. So it's gonna warm up in a minute. And like this right here, got all kinds of buffalo grass right around it. I could have trimmed all of the buffalo grass as well, but it's so young, I don't want to do anything to it that will impede its growth. All these little grasses here with wider leaves are not buffalo grass, and they'll look just like this in a couple days. This area is done. I keep mentioning foxtail because that's the most prolific weed in this area. 
this is just like bluegrass or something. But all of these broad leaves are weeds. That's another foxtail. This is either crabgrass or barnyard grass. And we have lamb's quarters like that right there. Dollar weed and this right here. Not sure if you'll be able to see that or not, but that's wild carrot. A lot of these broadleaf weeds will get four or five feet tall. The lamb's quarter will get just huge if you leave that. So if we left this entire patch within another couple weeks, depending on the rain, this would be just completely weeds and it would shade out the buffalo grass completely. So that's why it's important to get in there and weed while your buffalo grass is at this height and you can't spray it yet. Until you can spray, you're gonna have to get in there and weed. Can't remember what the name of this weed is anymore. It's got a long tap root and some pretty big leafy leaves, but it's part of the mustard family. And it's kind of prickly. Yeah. This buffalo grass right here and right there would have died eventually. It would be really nice to be able to spray right now, but not an option. All right, under that big mess, we had one, two, three, four, five buffalo grass plants. Some people can afford to just put a ton of seeds down, but at anywhere from 27 to a hundred dollars a pound and they're real big seeds so a pound does not go very far at that kind of price there's no way that i could afford to put just put tons of seed down like that this stuff i can pull out right next to the buffalo grass because the roots just go straight down. This, I believe, is a sedge. And it doesn't have much of a root system, but it has rhizomes so it spreads pretty quick all right I'm doing more damage than I should we'll just cut the top off the rest of this we're cutting the top off the buffalo grass as well but like I said they're both going to grow back, but one of them is going to get sprayed. I am not 100% sure that the herbicide is going to kill this sedge, but I believe it will. We're actually going to be planting sedge in a couple other areas. That is smartweed. Yeah, some of the buffalo grass that's under these weeds has been shaded since it came up. 
Lots of weeds. Beautiful. Either a robin or a bluebird, if they have an egg that's not viable, they'll take it out of the nest and fly it a good ways away from the nest and drop it. That way they don't bring attention to the nest. That's why you sometimes find their eggs just laying out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, there was a lot of buffalo grass underneath these weeds. I'll show you a couple lookalikes here. Right here, if you have stems going straight out to the sides, low to the ground, still a real fine grass. But that is not buffalo grass. This, right next to it, is. Again, that is not buffalo grass. And that is. That's buffalo grass right there. And that's not. And we got a bunch of buffalo grass over that way. Look at the root on that yellow foxtail. There's no buffalo grass right next to it, so I could yank it like that. There's a couple back here. Okay. Let me show you this part right here. You can see there's buffalo grass underneath this whole mess here. I had planned on coming in here with the weed whacker, but geez, there's just so many like this smart weed and stuff here. We got one little buffalo grass right there. Well, a couple over there as well, but we got these big weeds everywhere. I'm wondering if I could get away with just spraying this with Quinn Clorac. Quinn Clorac is the weed killer that does not kill buffalo grass, but it does kill the foxtail and all these other broadleaf weeds. The thing is, if I don't get some sun to the buffalo grass real soon, it's going to die. That's what happened the first time I planted it. I just weeded this area out here. We got a tiny plant here, one there, one there, one there. Little plants all over the place, a bunch of them right there. And it's going to be the same underneath all of this. So unless I can trim it really close to the ground, I'm going to end up losing this stuff. Maybe I'll give it a try with the scissors and see how that works. Yeah, I really want to try the Quinn Clorac because if it does work after two weeks, a little over two weeks, which is about the time that all of these weeds start catching up, if it does work then without harming the buffalo grass, that would be definitely the way to do it. All right, let me try cutting this with the scissors and see how that looks. And we'll make a decision on the quinclorac after that. Okay, I did a little hand trimming to see what the haircut method is going to look like. That's what that's called when you cut it right over the top of your plant. My buffalo grass is anywhere from, well, anywhere from really tiny to, I would say, two inches tall. If I take the trimmer and trim this all to two inches, including out in the field there, 
then after it dries out all of this is going to dry out really quick like you can see buffalo grass right in there and all that stuff laying around it that stuff laying around it is going to dry out and a lot of it's going to blow away within a little bit and anything that's cut off the top of the buffalo grass isn't going to make any difference so i guess the biggest thing i worry about is walking in there but there's no way I can avoid that, but I can't do that today. So what I think I'm going to do is just continue what I'm doing. Give this really thick stuff right here a haircut with the scissors. Get as much as I can and then continue to work my way around the edge. And I'll come back in here tomorrow or the day after and get the stuff in the field. Because this is just way too wet to be walking on it. I'll damage all these little plants if I do that. Okay. Yeah, I really wish I could spray the Queen Clorac right now, but I've never tried it, and I think I could probably get away with it, but if it kills all my buffalo grass, that would really suck. All right, let me finish this haircut I got to get a whole lot more done today and I believe this video is going to stretch on to a couple days. Okay, I hand weeded the shop prairie as good as I could from the edge. I didn't want to kneel in here at all. It's bad enough putting your palm somewhere, but I got it pretty darn good. I'm not sure how long it took, probably, oh, three, four hours. And like I said, the rest, I'm going to get in here with the weed whacker and whack off the tops of all this foxtail. But I will have to hand pull this stuff. We got pigweed here and hollyhock. Both of them are pretty darn invasive. I'm going to have to get rid of that hollyhock as well. There's hollyhock seeds everywhere. So I'm going to be spraying this area to get rid of the hollyhock for the next few years. But... Yeah, I'll have to plant that hollyhock somewhere else. That yellow hollyhock there is a relative of the first plant that we planted here on the property. We planted a hollyhock. Oh, the barn was right here. We planted a hollyhock right in here somewhere, and it's moved a couple places. It reseeds itself. It's a biennial. So it's reseeded itself, and we kill it back pretty much everywhere except for one or two places every year and next year we'll just hand plant it somewhere over there it can't stay here okay let me show you a little bit about what this looks like over here yeah this will be a multi-day video because i think i'm going to get rained out today and i don't want to work on really wet ground so this one here yeah, we have a little bit of buffalo grass down here. I don't think these weeds are shading it out at all. Got a little bit of nightshade right there. But again, that's not shading anything out. And the little bit of foxtail down here isn't shading anything out. That's the big concern, is that it gets shaded out. So we have an area here. I can actually reach that from here. And... This one doesn't look as muddy. This is all undisturbed ground here. That was all churned up. So that one gets a lot more muddy than this one. Yeah, you can hear the thunder. I have to get out of here soon. We'll have to get this, that succulent weed. We have to get that out of there. The buffalo grass is doing real good in this one. And it's actually a bit thicker than that one which was the first one planted but got a little area here 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 and i mean just bits and pieces need weeding but it looks like the majority of it well i'll have to come through here just like i did on the last one and hand weed all through here and through here yeah, I guess. It's probably going to be roughly the same. Got a big old succulent weed right there. 
yeah, nowhere near as many weeds over here. I can probably reach a lot of these. Look at all that buffalo grass right there. And we do have, like that's a baby tree right there. And we got some bigger weeds out in there. But I think those will wait until I spray. I do believe this is gonna be easier. Yeah, I'll make this video a couple parts and I'll spread it over a few days because I'm gonna be working on the tiny house during that time as well. So I will get back with you as soon as I start weeding again. Since I last recorded, it's rained twice, and we still have a little bit of standing water here. Well, not really water, but it's really wet. So, after I signed off last time, it rained pretty good, and then I came back, and this side was relatively dry. It's still pretty dry. So, I started right in here, and I did get all this stuff under the tree. I weeded all the way up and I ended up right in this area somewhere and then it started raining again. So this video is really about how to identify buffalo grass and I believe I've covered that pretty darn good already. And the techniques of weeding it, which I've covered pretty good. So I think I'm gonna sign off on this. So we got a good deal of nice buffalo grass right in this little area. So kind of scan around. Some grasses come up and they go straight up, kind of like that, that's buffalo grass. But usually buffalo grass starts to curve and curl over right away. It ends up having like a wavy look to it. And usually, depending on how old it is, this is like a couple days old and it only has two blades like that. But really quick, it develops little clumps like this. So that should help you identify it. And the only thing I really didn't show you is trimming it with a power trimmer, but it's the same as cutting it with the scissors or a grass cutter. You just cut it right above where the buffalo grass is, get down there and see where that is. Like if I cut it right here and I cut a little bit of the buffalo grass, that's not gonna matter. So you just give it a haircut, trim the top, and then the buffalo grass will be able to get light and that'll buy you enough time until you can get in there and spray it. And what I spray this with is quinclorac. I believe I have a couple videos on that. I'll put all the related videos down in the description and the pinned comment so you can see all that. Yeah, I'm gonna weed the rest of this right here, or I'm gonna get as far as I can before it rains again. It's probably gonna rain a couple more times today. Look at this gigantic weed. Holy moly. Actually wanna leave the dirt on top of this rock. We're gonna grow some hens and chicks up here. The oldest plant since we moved here, we have a fairly big rock on the other side of the house there. I planted some hens and chicks there 12 years ago and it looks gorgeous now. All right, let me get back at this, and I'm not exactly sure when I'll get back to this, or another video on this. This is doing really good, especially this one here. Look at all that grass in there. This one's doing pretty good as well, but it's got more weeds than buffalo grass but in the end, they're both gonna do really well. So I guess once these start filling in and the weeds are dead, 
I'll do another video and update you on what's going on. So if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe and click on the update icon. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them in the comment section below. And if you share the video and or give it a like, it helps the channel out greatly. Thanks for watching and have a great day.